Well, it's launch day for the Fractal Define R6. Can it live up to the hype? I don't know. I've had it for about a week. A little over a week. I've had a chance to play with it for about a week. So, uh, yeah. What's the verdict? What's the result? Well, it's complicated. First off, to give you some context, the Fractal Define R5, in my opinion, was a game changer. I mean, it was a trendsetter. So the Fractal Define R6, I mean, it's got some lofty, lofty goals to live up to, especially if you're expecting the same level of quality, the same innovative design that we saw in the Fractal Define R5. One of the things that set the Fractal Define R5 apart from the competition was that it was quiet, really quiet. And the Define R6, is available in several launch day configurations with and without a tempered glass side panel. The version we have here is the, uh, the, the standard you know, black with white accents that has a tempered glass side panel, so that's the one that we've tested. They've added uh, options for all kinds of water cooling, including custom loop water cooling. In fact, you can mount four AIO coolers in this thing, including a 360 or two, which is kind of nuts in a, in, a, in a case this size. I mean, this is a relatively compact case. Now, the internal layout is pretty similar to what you'd expect. Uh, the manual is really the standout in terms of quality. Like there is a manual that comes with this case that is available. And I would strongly suggest that anybody is, that is looking to use this case as part of their build, check out the manual because the manual is extremely, extremely well put together and will show you different case layout options depending on what kind of fans and radiators that you want to run. Whether you want to do, you know, 120 millimeter cooler at the back or, you know, 120 or 240 or 360 or 280 at the top or the front, you can even put a radiator in the bottom. I am a little concerned about overall cooling capacity when you've got the solid top installed, however. We've got to actually do a build in this system and see what we're dealing with as far as thermals go as far as the, the, the overall cooling capacity, because in the default configuration, the top comes with a solid piece of metal and sound dampening material. And if you remove the top and the sound dampening material so that you can use the air vent on the top, because it comes with this really innovative cover where you can pick if you want an air vent at the top or a, a solid cover, obviously that's gonna negatively impact how quiet the case is. I mean, you may be able to still have a really quiet computer by running fans at a lower RPM, but the question becomes, is there going to be enough cooling capacity in order to be able to do that? Another standout feature on the Define R6 is that it maintains a single five and quarter inch drive bay, but somehow manages not to waste the space that would normally go to a five and a quarter inch drive bay. So if you're not gonna use a five and a quarter inch drive, you've got lots of options for continuing to use that space. But if you are gonna use a five and a quarter inch drive, say for a, a Blu-ray or a memory card reader or USB breakout, whatever you might need in a five and a quarter inch drive bay, overclocking stuff. I mean, Asus has that really nifty five and a quarter inch, you know, panel breakout thing for their overclocking that has all the little numbers and stuff on it. You can use that with this case. And in fact, if you use something like the Asus breakout, because it's a relatively compact five and a quarter inch device, you would still be able to use the top five and a quarter inch area, say, for a 360 meter, millimeter radiator in the top, possibly without you know necessarily impeding it because the five and a quarter inch drive bay uh, alignment thing it doesn't come back all that far, which is really clever. It's really a really clever thing that uh, Fractal has done. So good job, Fractal. In terms of build quality and and how it's put together and all that, pretty impressive. I like the fact that the thumb screws are optional, though I wish the thumb screws were retained. I think that would have been a really easy, low cost option to make everything that much better. When you unscrew the thumb screws, they basically fall out. They're not, they're not retained, but unless you're transporting the system, the thumb screws really are kind of optional because the sides snap in with little, little ball joint things. So I guess if, unless you're you know, doing a lot of traveling with your machine, you don't really need the thumb screws anyway. Another really innovative feature at the front of the case is the fact that it's completely modular. You can totally take out everything as it comes. It'll hold a bunch of three and a half inch drives. You can take out the three and a half inch trays and take the, the front panel mesh and move it all the way to the back of the case and just have that area be open for extra, 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 extra long graphics cards. Uh, maybe you wanna show off a, a, you know, a reservoir or a cooling system or something like that. You could do that. You can move the, the fractal metal panel thing all the way to the back of the case. You can leave it like it is and hide a bunch of stuff in the front of the case. It's your call. It's however you want to do it, which is really pretty awesome. 
The shroud in the bottom is otherwise non-removable, but it is vented, so you get some, some airflow through that. It also has vertical uh, expansion slots, and so you can install your graphics card vertically if you want. There is an optional PCI Express 3.0 breakout kit, which has mounting holes on the uh, power supply shroud, so you can use that easily. We've got that. It worked out pretty well. We did test the PCI Express 3.0 speeds. It worked great. If you're gonna get one of these from aftermarket, be careful of the quality. The quality does matter a lot. If you get one of the sort of, uh, you know, cheap imports, you're likely looking at PCI Express 2.0. In general, um, it can make the acoustics and the thermals a little worse if you vertically mount your card. It depends if it's blower style or, or fan style a little bit. But if you want to show off your graphics card, if you're getting one of those, you know, like the, the NVIDIA Star Wars graphics cards or some other really high-end graphics card to show off with your system, well, maybe vertically mounting your GPU is for you. I like that this case is a little bigger than most cases that vertically mount the GPU. And I also like that the fractal uh, PCI Express breakout slot kit uh, has a lot of cable length. That means that you can still use your regular expansion slots without blocking them. Some of the shorter cable kits will actually prevent you from using any PCI Express slots um, on your motherboard when you're using the breakout kit for the vertically mounted uh, GPU, which I just, have, the mind is like, no, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna use all of my expansion slots. So I actually like this setup that Fractal has a lot better because theoretically I could get even more PCI Express devices in uh, than I would be able to because the GPU doesn't block any expansion slots whatsoever. That's exciting. Behind the motherboard tray, we've got two two and a half inch drives for legacy you know, two and a half inch devices. If you do decide to move the front panel all the way to the back of the case, you don't give up all of your three and a half inch slots. You still have two. You can mount the drives vertically at the back of the case as opposed to using the trays. You end up not using the trays at all, but hey, that's fine. You still got two three and a half inch drives. I mean, let's face it. If you're gonna build a system like this, I know me personally, I'm gonna be using 10 gig ethernet for a connection to a storage server in another room with lots of hard drives. So in terms of like local storage, probably gonna be, you know, Optane, NVMe, possibly SSD. Those are gonna be two and a half inch, maybe a four terabyte, three and a half inch drive, certainly not more than two. So that's nice, Fractal, good job there. This case does support EATX motherboards, which is a nice feature. ATX or EATX, good job, Fractal. Can also run motherboards as small as ITX in it if you want. Although there's not really, you know, much of a benefit. I, I would have liked to have seen something, I don't know what, that if you're gonna run an ITX motherboard, maybe you could reuse some of the three and a half inch bays or something like that because you're gonna have a lot of room in the expansion slot area. Of course, if you vertically mount your GPU, uh, it's gonna hide all the wasted space, so eh, I guess that's fine. Maybe uh, a horizontal reservoir or something like that back there. You could do that with a mod pretty easily, I think. The cable grommets on this case are pretty good. I like those, they worked out pretty well. Also the Velcro straps at the back work really well. This case also has a fan hub. The fan hub is, is pretty awesome. Requires a SATA power connector. You can run it off your motherboard through a four pin connector and then it'll work with all of the three pin fans. So you, you can put a lot of three pin fans in this case if you want to. Most motherboards have a lot of fan headers so I'm not gonna be using that in the build that we put together. The front door has a nice uh, brushed texture. It's a sort of a vertical brushed texture. It does seem to pick up dust pretty easily, but it does not pick up fingerprints. So I like the texture. There's also a ton of sound dampening material in the front of the case. It breathes through, through the side. The fan gap at the side is about one centimeter, give or take, maybe a little less, um, so that you've got pretty good breathability there. And of course the front dust filter is removable and it's very similar to the top of dust filter with the metal metal top remove. Also for your custom loop water coolers, water cooler people out there, there is a fill port at the top. So you can install your fill port right underneath the metal. And so there's a button, a release button on the top. Should make a custom loop modification pretty easily. So the 120 millimeter fan at the back is adjustable. Also included with this case are three fractal, um, about 68 CFM cubic feet per minute fans. Um, two in the front, one in the back pre-installed. It's a nice touch, Fractal, works pretty well. Another nice feature of this case is the front panel connections are pre-sleeved. Comes with a nice sort of braided uh, outer shell. Another sort of interesting thing that Fractal has done with this case. Now, if you don't like the two and a half inch drives behind the motherboard tray, you can relocate them to the top of the shroud. So you can put them right here if you want. This is also where your 
card would occupy if you were gonna mount it vertically though. So I've got my two and a half inch drive installed. I'm fine with it behind the motherboard tray. No big deal for me. And there you have it, tempered glass. The fine R6 from Fractal. Does it live up to the hype? Does it live up to the expectations? I think it does. Uh, I was hoping for a little bit better because with the Define R5, you sort of had to choose between the like industry leading sound dampening or amazing cooling. And I feel like the choice is still there with the R6. However, even with this configuration where we've got, uh, you know, 450 watts from the wall at peak, uh, three fans on the intake and one on the exhaust seems to deal with it just fine. The extra exhaust from the blower style fan works really well. I chose the WX7100 because it doesn't actually exhaust its heat out the back of the case. It exhausts its heat uh, into the case. I mean, there's a little tiny row of vents at the back, but they're not good enough. It's Most of its heat is going into the case. And we were able to measure at the wall that this thing really was dumping north of 350 watts into the inside of the case. So, it is impressive that it worked as well as that. Now, waste not, want not. When we put the uh, the baby puke brown fan in the front, sorry, Noctua, uh, flesh tone brown fan in the uh, in the front because you can't see it, and that can be our little secret. But it still worked. It, it actually did help. So I think uh, I think my general recommendation with this case is that if you have a system that's dumping a crazy amount of heat, going to run Vega, multiple Vegas, which is ultimately what the system will be doing, helping me test things in Linux, you're definitely gonna need some beefed up cooling. It may yet be that I need to take the top off and add some fans, but knowing that I have that capacity to do that, if I'm dumping five, 600 watts of heat inside that case, I'm pretty happy with that. Overall, I think this case gets an A. Good job, Fractal. The Define R6, it's pretty nice. Although, I expect more innovation next time, Fractal. More more exciting stuff, you know, keep pushing the envelope. This feels like an incremental upgrade on the Define R5. They've made some bold choices and certainly some choices that are gonna be copied uh, to other cases in the market, I think. But I feel like Fractal could have pushed the envelope more. What, in what way, I couldn't say. But I feel like they did okay. So, at least with this particular system. If you picked up one of these and you wanna show off your system, please do join us in the level one forums. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.